Hello, everybody. You are listening to the Startup Secrets for Entrepreneurs, and I'm your host, Shelby Oleschlager. Our mission here is to help entrepreneurs make a difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch. Join me today where we dig deep with our guests to give you the best concept and strategies to fast track your business. Today, our special guest is Ali Arney. She's here with us today. So, Ali, thank you so much for joining us. And just to get started, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am an HR consultant. I own uh, Buffalo Diamond Consulting. It's my own consulting firm that is mostly focused on career strategy, resume writing, interview preparation, things to help people get into their dream careers. And I have been in HR for well over 10 years, close to 15 now, and kind of fell into it by accident, but loved it, stayed. Um, my background started out in recruiting, transitioned into more of a human capital management and business consulting side, and recently more into my own path, more focused on career strategy, like I mentioned. Mm, that's awesome. So when you've been like learning and growing, what are the main things that you're able to help these businesses with in your past? I really enjoy talent, uh, talent acquisition, through that, building different cultures, helping uh, business owners and teams understand each other's personalities and how to work with each other, doing a little bit of Enneagram work with those managers too, and just really helping people to come together and understand that each person brings value to a company and how they can use their strengths to do that and pull, pull on each other's strengths, lean on each other's strengths, and use that to grow the business based on good quality uh, ethics and morale. Mm -hmm. So just speaking of that, if that's something you're interested, can we talk a little bit or dive deeper into that? What are the things that you're doing to help build that, that togetherness within these businesses? Sure. I think that personally, I believe that communication is key to everything. (laughs) I think it would solve the world's problems if we could all just be great communicators, right? So helping people develop some people skills, especially managers, leaders, uh, understand how to better address conflict helping uh, employees of different levels understand how to communicate their concerns and kind of have that strength to voice their concerns and Mm -hmm. understanding just sometimes not everyone's going to be happy. That's okay. But how do we bring that together to find a resolution? And even if you're not happy, can you at least understand why this decision was made and be able to help leaders communicate those things, but also help employees communicate their concerns too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I do think communication really is like the end all be all. Like if we can get that down pat, we're going to be set. So with, um, you said that you've been going from, you know, freelancing or helping other businesses to wanting to go on your own. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Sure. So I worked within corporate America uh, until about four and a half years ago, and I went on maternity leave and decided to not go back. Uh, And so with that, I started freelancing mostly resume writing at that point. And then through that, started working as a human capital manager for another small entrepreneur, uh, did some projects there and met some different business owners who needed some help from more of a consultative perspective. Mm -hmm. So I worked with them, helped them build their business, helped them grow, especially the career transition side. They were more focused on that piece too. And through that, I still freelanced with individuals, but really as I got deeper into the business side of it, I realized that's where my heart is, is working one-on-one with people and helping them find their own confidence. Mm -hmm. So I wrapped up some of those projects and Buffalo Diamond has been around for, for that four and a half years as a general concept, helping individuals, but really made that transition back in March to be more full-time with that. Um, So I've been growing my network, rebuilding the website, trying to reach out and uh, really kind of starting fresh. It's, it's a new relaunch, I guess, of the business with a different capacity. So it's been a fun journey. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And just, you know, I love how things just kind of naturally direct you in ways that you're like, this is what I'm most best at. This is what I'm passionate about. And then you actually, you know, take the steps to get there. So mm-hmm. Since you've started Buffalo Diamond Consulting, has there been anything that's come up like surprising obstacles that you've had to face that you really weren't expecting when you're starting this? Uh, There's been a few, mostly around my network. So because I worked for a couple of years with different entrepreneurs, helping them with their business, and I made this, I won't call it a mistake. I made this choice when I was in corporate America as well to really just, I'm an all-in person. So I dived in and I focused solely on whatever it took to to grow those companies, 
But because of that, my network really became focused on whatever that company's industry was. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm transitioning into more of my own journey, I have a great network. I have a lot of wonderful people in my network I'm thankful for, but I've noticed the last year in particular was kind of siloed into one particular uh, industry. And I want to gain that breadth that I used to have with different industries too. So I think my biggest challenge is just getting back my network where it touches a lot of industries instead of primarily being connected with just one industry Mm -hmm. uh, so that I can just help as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. So how have you been able to overcome that to broaden your network so you're hitting more industries? Total transparency. I am in the midst of that right now. That is my trench. (laughs) Those are my weeds. Um, I am, I am there, but I'm working on finding new ways to network with great podcasts like this, uh, new opportunities to meet new professionals. I'm utilizing LinkedIn quite a bit Mm -hmm. and really calling on some of my tried and true network buddies, uh, from years past and just saying, Hey, like, do you have any networking events I can tag along to? Do you have any uh, people in particular you, you think could be a great connection for me and just being bold and asking for those connections, reaching out to our chamber. We have a really great uh, chamber of commerce here locally. So just finding ways to get connected with more businesses so that I can grow that professional network again. Yeah. So these businesses would be your clients, I guess, right? These businesses would actually have people in them that would be my clients. <laughs> so <laughs> professionals looking to make changes in their careers. Um, or I have had some co- some companies that had to unfortunately lay some people off and they wanted to provide a great resource for those employees to transition. And they've partnered with me as well. So I guess, yes, they would be my clients or those that I meet that maybe they know, everybody knows somebody. So maybe they know other professionals that are looking to make a transition and could recommend my services. Mm-hmm. So when you're, if you get hired for these jobs, what are kind of the first things that you want to do with them? Or what are some of the big things that you notice these corporations or the people working in them that you have to correct? Like one of the first things. Confidence. (laughs) Uh, I think we're all, career transitioning is just tough in general. People, people's self-image and their self-esteem gets hit hard because you're either, you're not transitioning for a great reason, typically, right? You've been laid off. You've been fired. You've had to leave or want to leave because you're in a toxic environment. There's not typically a great reason why people want to make that move. Sometimes I have people that they're just ready to move on and that's fine, but there's usually a catalyst there. So for me, I'm typically working with them. My first step is always a a one hour consultation. I include that with all of my packages for free because I believe it's so important for me to learn their personalities Mm -hmm. and see where they struggle and help them overcome that. So for some people, it's the confidence of how their, their job skills transition into a different industry or a new position. For some people, it's the confidence and understanding that they're ready to move on in their career. And they, they do have what it takes to become that manager or director. And some people, it's the confidence of just getting on the job market. You are worthy. Someone else will hire you. Uh, you know, despite what your boss has told you, you know, you are a fabulous contribution and value added employee, just rebuilding that confidence so that people can unfold their careers and their job skills to me. So I can take that, build a great resume and help them prepare for interviews with confidence. They can go in there and own those pieces and feel great about that transition instead of being a ball of nerves and almost talking themselves out of the interview. So uh, my goal is just to help people get where they need to be mentally so that they can go and win the interview. Mm -hmm. And that's probably where the consulting really comes in because it is so one-on-one. So is that, is that mostly your business structure is one-on-one consulting? Yes. I've done some small group, uh, but my heart is in one-on-one because everybody has their own, their own niche, their own issues, their own challenges. And I really love to help people figure out how to overcome those and give them a chance. Everybody just wants to be heard, right? So most people haven't had a chance to just talk openly about those concerns. So one-on-one consultative calls allow me to really help them figure out what their challenges are and how to overcome those and address those in their career search, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And it does make a lot of sense. It's how you're able to give the most value to them so that they can, you know, show up, like you said, with confidence and do, and even just holding that space, I think, letting them almost talk it through. And you might even just be sitting there hearing them and you're like, 
you have the answers. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Most of the time, I think I'm telling them, you know, just keep brain dumping, keep going, keep going. And they just, I let them ramble because I can get into, mm-hmm. I can pick up on so many things that they say. I'm like, did you hear what you said? That's literally what you want to do in your next job. And they're like, I do that. I do have that skill set. And that epiphany is what I, why I do this. It's, it's great. That's what I'm here for. That is so cool. So with, with the one-on-one, I'm always curious when people have these type of consultings, do you, do you do one-on-one? Like, is it a time span type of package or is it A to B type package? Like once you get to that result, no matter how long it takes with these clients or what Currently, is it? it's a time frame. Uh, currently the, the first call is a one hour consultation to figure out what our steps need to be. If they have purchased a career strategy call or a, an interview prep call that plays into it as well. There's some debrief on the resume worked in there. So there's several times that we're communicating, uh, but the length of those conversations really depends on what they feel they need, which they decide based on which package they purchase. Right. And yeah, that makes sense. So when you're trying to like you know, get them the results. It's like, you're going to take care of yourself as well and make sure that they're going to reach that as well. Um, so right now with building all this, has there been something that's really worked or what is working for you to start attracting more business to your, uh, consulting word of mouth and referrals. I think, especially with this industry and any consultative type of company, people want to know that they can trust you and they want to know that you get good results, right? That's why we hire consultants. So word of mouth is, has been my best friend. I have asked a few people, if, hey, if you had a great experience with me, would you mind you know, maybe recommending me to some friends or uh, even without me asking, I've had a, several people mention it on LinkedIn. Hey, I got my dream job. Great thanks to, to Allie. And of course they did all the work, but it's always a huge help to my business when they give me a shout out like that. So I would say at this point, majority of my business comes from word of mouth and referrals, which I think are tough to ask for. Uh, I personally don't care to ask for them because I feel, I feel silly. I don't know. I feel, I don't feel very humble in that moment, (laughs) but I guess it's, it is what's, necessary. And if they did have a great experience, I would like to share that with someone else. So I think overcoming my own confidence and asking for that boldly is what's growing my business and allowing me to help other people and allowing me to overcome that hump of it's a new business. I need to grow my own independent services kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I always find that when you're taking these new adventures and endeavors with business, that it is almost a lot of personal growth as well. And us overcoming like either how much to charge and like knowing your value and your worth. Like there's just so many things that are involved. Is that anything that you kind of struggle with when you're, you know, putting yourself out there to, you said, not as humbly, like ask for that <laughs> support. Absolutely. It's, it's interesting. I was networking with another career strategist the other day, um, looking at a potential partnership down the road, just if I need extra support or if she needs extra support And because of the demographic that I have most recently worked with, which would be educators transitioning into new fields, um, you know, we all know it's no secret. Teachers don't make a lot of money, right? So my prices have been significantly lowered in efforts to help them through this really tough time that teachers have been going through. But as I'm out on my own, I'm, I'm still happy to help teachers, but I would like to help other industries too, because it keeps my mind fresh working with all different industries. But in order to do that, I also have to to increase my prices a little bit because it does take a lot more work on my end. If I'm working with multiple industries and things, there's so much more that goes into it. And so during this call, she very kindly suggested that I increase my prices to match my value. Mm -hmm. And she had a very blunt, it was our first time talking to each other, had a very blunt conversation with me that I was underselling myself. And it's funny because usually I'm having that conversation with my clients about their services and their projects and things. Mm-hmm. And when she had that with me, that was a really big gut check. Um, so I am, I've been working on that, getting myself to push forward through some of those things, reading some personal development books um, and overcoming some confidence of my own that I, I was surprised was there. So it kind of hit me when she said it. So it was, it was a big wake up call. Uh, that's good. And yeah, like I find everyone has, I think some sort of block towards money or pricing and everything. And that's good that you kind of brought that attention, even like in some cases using different strategies for finance, I find helps like using points or like the prime memberships, for example, 
they've been super, you know, instead of, cause like for me, I definitely struggle with that. And if I were to, you know, use a point, it's like, I can look at a point a lot differently than I can look at a dollar. And, you know, like that could even be a cool option. I find that's helped. Um, yeah, definitely knowing your value because then you're able to help more people. So is that something that you just recently implemented? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's in the works right now. So it's interesting because what, what this individual mentioned to me was that when everyone looks at the market, market standards will give X price for this type of service, especially in our area. And when I am significantly priced on the other end, because I just want to help people. I really do. I have a bleeding heart. I do it all for free if I could, but I just can't. So (laughs) because she said, when she said that I was significantly underpriced, it would cause people to maybe not trust my services for such higher level positions or for, for quality service. And it really made me stop and realize what type of people do I want to help and how can I best serve them? If I'm making them question if my value is there, or if I'm, my quality is there with my services, because I am so underpriced, I do it too. I I love, I love bargains, but if I find a cheap deal on something, I'm always going to look at reviews because I'm, I'm skeptical, right? So there's a big concern with underpricing yourself. If your confidence is making you underprice yourself, you're actually going to lessen your business because people are going to question you more. And so looking at it from what's going to benefit you most, does a price increase allow you to still serve the people that you want to serve, the demographics that you're there to serve based on level or whatever your price is or, or your services? And are you doing that at market level so that people can trust in your services and come and refer you and that sort of thing? Or are you doing it so far on the other end that you're causing skepticism about your business? And that was tough. That was really tough for me. But at the end of the day, I want to give people that confidence in themselves. So I need to be an example of that. So I'm going to be an example of that. I'm going to have confidence in my services too. I love that. Just being that leader and being the influence of like, this is, this is how it's done. I fully believe in myself and my product and they will as well, right? That's so powerful. Absolutely. I hope so. I hope it helps. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It definitely will. And yeah, like there's so many ways around that too. Like I mentioned, just like the Amazon Prime aspect. I always find that interesting. Like the pointing system instead of money really can go with such a long ways. And people like the game. People like the game of like, oh, how many points is this going to take? Or, you know, spending so. almost more money because they know it's worth that investment. So that's really cool. Um, So moving forward, I'm curious now that you've kind of been developing this consulting, what is your next goals? Like what does a year look like from now for you? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. I, I suppose on the, on the same train of confidence, I would like to be a leader in the industry in the Nashville area for career strategy. I do work with people outside of Nashville, but I would like to be a go-to for that. Uh, Someone that people I really want my reputation to be that I help people. Uh, I know that's cliche and cheesy for a lot of people, but that's truly impact is my, is my mission and my purpose. And I want people to be in their dream positions to go to work happy and not have to feel like they're being mentally or emotionally abused at work. I want them to have the confidence to get up and go pursue what they want to pursue. And if I have been a part of that, then that would be great. So the more people I can impact, the better. So if I'm a leader in that industry, then hopefully that means that I've impacted a lot of people. Mm -hmm. that's perfect it's so interesting hearing people like you and just hearing these stories because it is all about everyone can make that little bit of the difference in someone's life and your is very unique story and a unique background like of how you're helping and it is it's all to help these people really find their passion and pursue what is important and what they're called to do so this is definitely like I'd say what you're called to do in this way so I always like to finish off uh if you have one last one good final piece of advice or something that you want all the listeners to be thinking about, what would it be? Someone told me several years ago that your business will not outgrow your, your personal self-image. So continuing to grow personally, read personal development, self-development books, um, how to, how to uh, have power and confidence in dealing with people was one of my favorite books by Les Giblin. Uh, that really had a huge impact in me. Just find that book on people skills or confidence or business or whatever that makes you feel great. It heals your brain to read real books. It heals your confidence to read and gain knowledge. 
And for me, reading was one of the biggest things. And any any successful person you listen to, they will almost all tell you to read uh, because it does just move you forward so much. So I would say grow your your personal self image, work on your confidence, work on work on your personal development, and then that will allow you to go and grow your business um, so that you have the confidence to do so. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. So for anyone listening that really resonates with your message and they want to learn more or learn how they, how you can help them really get to that goal of theirs, where can they find you? Sure. They can find me on LinkedIn, Allie Arms Arnie on LinkedIn, or you can find me on my website, which is buffalodiamondconsulting.com. Perfect. So I hope everyone reaches out and I just want to say thank you so much. This is a good little conversation and definitely a lot of the things that I can take away from it, even though it's not really related to my industry at all, but it's, it's, it's something that we all are, have a connection with. So hopefully people can take some stuff away from it like I did. So thank you so much for sharing today. Thank you so much for having me. It was great chatting with you. It was.